in the last section, we put together our RDS instance, and we're just going to let it do its thing as it creates that database. While that's working, we're going to flip on over to another dashboard and create our Elastic Cache instance as well. So I'll click on Services up at the top, and I'll search for Elastic Cache. And okay, I've been saying Elastic Cache. I guess it's really Elastic Cache, whatever. All the same. Okay, so once over here, we're going to scroll down a little bit. And we really want to launch a cluster, but it's showing me this kind of annoying dashboard right here. Let's try clicking on Redis on the left-hand side, and then we'll find the Create button up here. So then this is going to walk us through the process of creating a cluster. Now, the interesting thing here is that we are specifically making a cluster. So technically, when you make an Elastic Cache instance, we are getting a copy of Redis, but there's some kind of separate nodes that just relay information from the primary Redis node. Way more detailed than we really need to go in. Just so you know, essentially, we're getting a very high-powered copy of Redis that would do really, really well if we had a lot of traffic. Now, by default, we don't really get the cluster created unless you select that little option right there. We do not need a cluster, so we're just going to leave it set as Redis without that checkbox checked. So then we'll throw a couple of options in here. For the name, I will enter in multi docker redis. We don't need a description. We can leave just about everything else on here at the default, except for the node type. So the default node type is a very expensive little instance. You would pay a lot of money for this thing. So we want to 120% make sure that you do not use the default selection here. So we'll click on little drop down, and then we're going to go to T2 and we want to do cache T2 micro, which is the cheapest copy around. It's also the lowest performance, but of course our application doesn't really have very high performance demands. And we'll click on save. Now I want you to really verify right here that we do in fact have the cheapest option selected, which should be a cache T2 micro. If you have anything else selected, you will pay some dollars for it. We then get asked for the number of replicas. In this case, replicas would be kind of those separate nodes that kind of supercharge your copy of Redis, again, kind of outside the scope. We don't need any replicas because we definitely do not have high performance demands for our application. So I'm going to change replicas to none. All right. So now we get asked a couple of other settings over here. Some of these are just a little bit nasty. We get asked to create a subnet. For this, we'll create a new subnet. This has to do a little bit with security. We don't really need to focus on the details of this thing too much. All we need to do is put in some name right here. I'll say Redis group. The one thing we do care about is marking the VPC ID as the default VPC. And so if you have a fresh AWS account or if you've never created any other VPCs, the only option right here will be the default VPC that is created for your region. And so you will want to select that default VPC so that it's in the same kind of networking group as the RDS instance we put together already and the Elastic Beanstalk instance that we put together as well. And then for the subnets, we can just check both these right here. And it's just going to give us access to those different subnets. All right, and that's pretty much it. You'll notice that we also have the option to select a security group right here, but we're gonna take care of the security group in just a little bit as a little follow-up to all this stuff. So I'll scroll on down to the bottom and I'll click on Create. And that's pretty much it. It's now creating our instance of a Redis group of, I don't know, cache instances, whatever you wanna call it. All right, so we gotta wait for this thing to be created as well. So we'll take a quick pause and when we come back to the next section, we're gonna do the last step, which is to wire all this stuff up with a common security group and apply that security group to the Elastic Beanstalk, RDS, and EC instances. So quick pause and I'll see you in just a minute.